Unreal Blueprints streaming volumes with sublevels. So let's continue from where we left off last time. We were talking about sublevels, and we know a level is a collection of actors. We knew each level contains its own actors and blueprints, so a level has a blueprint. And we know when Unreal navigates to a different level, it unloads the existing actors and loads new ones. But what we started getting into in the last video was that we can create sublevels, which are levels within other levels. So we started to establish a relationship between the persistent level and a sublevel. And we began to understand that potentially a persistent level could have a large number of sublevels. And this unlocks a lot of functionality within Unreal to let us create very, very large spaces because then each sublevel is only loaded when it's needed. But what we didn't solve in the last video, we walked right up to the point and then stopped, was how do we actually load the sublevels and the persistent levels? And that's what we'll pick up right here. We're gonna pick up with level streaming volumes in this, in this video, and then next video we're gonna talk about how to do it with blueprints. So let's talk about, a little bit about level streaming volumes. So level streaming is the technology that Unreal uses to stream the levels, which is to say only load a thing when it's needed. So we create a volume, which is just a three dimensional space in a persistent level. And then we connect that to the sub level. So what we're saying is when the viewport is inside the level streaming volume, load the associated sub level when it's not unloaded. So what this allows us to do is whatever the player is looking at, so the viewport, what we're looking at, as long as it's within that streaming volume, it'll load the associated section. When it's not part of it, it will unload the others. This is a much more upfront version of doing that dynamic loading I discussed. So every time we're in the volume, load the thing. When we're not in the volume, unload the thing. Very, very straightforward. So there are going to be multiple steps to this. We'll talk about it in the next slide and then we'll see it in practice in Unreal. So we will need to load a level streaming volume in a level. Then we will need to go into the levels panel and associate that streaming volume with the corresponding sublevel, as I mentioned. So this slide shows the steps to do it, but we need to actually move over to Unreal to see this in practice. So remember, first step, we're going to create a streaming level volume or a level streaming volume. And then we're going to associate it with the sublevel we want to load when the viewport is initially within that. So let's move over to Unreal and pick up where we just left off in the last video. In the last video, we had our two different levels. One was a duplicate of another. I took out a wall from each and we put them together to create an even larger space right here. And then we saw on the left hand side is our sub level on the right hand side is our persistent level. So let's add in a level streaming volume and then associate it with the sub level. So when we pass into the volume, it will then load the sub level. So it is a level streaming volume, which puts it under volumes. So place actors down here in volumes. And there it is right there, level streaming volume. So I'm going to click and drag it and place it into the persistent level. Now, if you get an error when you attempt to do this, make sure that the persistent level is the current level. Because the thing you can't do is put a level streaming volume for a sublevel in itself, because that doesn't make sense. So always make sure the persistent level is the current level. So notice we got a little tiny box, a one by one Unreal unit box. So I'm gonna come over here to the details and I'm gonna make this significantly bigger. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll and then I'm gonna say, oh, you know what? Let's make this 15 by 15. And actually, let's make it 15 a little bit bigger. Let's say 19. So notice this kind of volume I'm moving around right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this just right about there. So what I've done then is notice this kind of cut right here in the middle where these two things don't quite meet. And I did it on purpose so we could see this. And I've stuck this level streaming volume on top of those. So as I approach this thing, it's going to load the sublevel, but it's also going to develop a little bit of problem, but we'll see that in just a second. 
So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now that's the first step. We've added the level streaming volume, literally clicked and dragged, I changed its scale, I moved it around a little bit, pretty straightforward. We now need to associate the level streaming volume with the sub level. So when we're in the volume, load the level. Okay, so window, levels, like we did in the previous video, come down here to main area one, which is the sub level, and this tiny button right here summons level details, or click it, and open this right here. Now this is where things are a little bit confusing to find if you're not used to seeing them. When I come down here to streaming volumes right here, come over here and then click on the plus and it's going to add an element. So we could potentially have many different volumes, but we're just going to add one. And say, okay, starts at zero and say, okay, which one do you mean? Well, we can just click on this list and go, oh, we mean that one right there. We only have one, so it's pretty easy to find. So we're done, actually. We created the level streaming volume, we went into the level details, and we associated the volume with the sub-level. So let's close this, and close this, and play and see what happens. So I'm facing this wall, and I'm running around, and it's not loaded yet, but let's cross over into the volume. And then it loaded. So what happened? What was that delay? Well, that delay was the viewport wasn't crossed into it. Now let's do something a little bit weird. Oh, what just happened, right? We just fell right out of the level. Well, what happened was, and I kind of did it on purpose, was the level streaming volume didn't match the size of the sub-level. So when we got way over here, we crossed outside of the streaming volume and it unloaded the sub-level right underneath us and we fell right out of the space. So what did this tell us? It tells us, ooh, actually, this needs to be a bit bigger. So let's make this actually uh, 30. Uh, actually, let's make it like, I don't know, 40, right? Oh, and it's changing it the other way, sorry. 40 this way, 15 that way. And so now we've got this big old box and we'll just kind of move it like this and maybe we'll move this in a little bit right here, clicking and dragging and we'll arrange this a little bit the way we want. And it's okay if it sticks outside a little bit. So what have I done now? Well, now whenever we are within this volume, so we're going to start over here. In fact, I'll drag it just past player start. We're gonna start right here, and as soon as I walk into this, boom, we're gonna have it, and I can walk entirely within this space and still be within that sub-level. So not loaded, loaded, right? And we pass through it. But notice we need to be inside the volume for it to be loaded, but as long as we are inside the volume, it's loaded. But as soon as we pass back out, so let's run to this far edge, and then we turn around, it's gone because we're not inside the volume anymore. So a level streaming volume is incredibly useful for allowing us to dynamically load and unload sublevels. And in fact, we could make this much more advanced. We could add a bunch of sublevels and anytime we cross within their volumes, we could load and unload, load and unload. We generally need to keep in mind a sort of train metaphor, right? If we are in one car, we generally want the car behind us and the car in front of us to be loaded at any one time. Otherwise, what will happen happened before and we will fall right into the level. Or we won't see something ahead of us or we'll just see a door to the void or something like that. So we want to generally kind of load something, load the next thing, load the next thing, and then as we're moving, unload things behind us so we're not having a whole lot of things persist in memory if we don't need them to be in the memory anymore. So this has been a video on moving into level streaming volumes. So we add a level streaming volume right here, volumes, level streaming volume, drop it into the persistent level, make sure the persistent level is the current level. Then we just change its scale to whatever we need, make sure we're filling the space of the sub level. Then we go to window, levels, click the thing we want to load, summon its details, this little button right here, go down to streaming volumes, create 
a new element and then associate it with that corresponding volume. And notice we could add a bunch of different volumes. The other thing we can do is say, hey, should this be initially loaded or not? And what we could have done with the sublevel is said, hey, when the persistent level loads, also load the sublevel at the same time. And we could have done that if we wanted to. But we didn't, and now we have this streaming volume. So streaming volumes are particularly useful. Again, we can set up some volumes, literally drop it into a persistent level, associate with the sublevel, and the loading's done. And where we'll do it all for us. But there might be cases where we only want to load when other things happen. So for example, instead of walking into a volume, maybe it's when we press a button or we unlock a door or something else. For those, we're going to have to get a little more complicated and we're going to have to shift over to blueprints to do it. So in the next video, we're going to do this a little more dynamically. So in the previous video, we set up the sublevel. In this level, in this video, we set up streaming volumes, which are very, very useful. But there might be occasions where we want to make this even more dynamic, and we again press a button or do something else. And if we want to deal with input, we're going to be wanting to use blueprints. So in the next video, we'll see how to do this same dynamic loading using only blueprints.